Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to lesson two. Jay here from borntoproduce.com. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how easy it is to create a melody. So let's get on with it. Also, later on in the course, we're going to be looking at recording guitar parts and a singer. So lots and lots of good stuff coming up later on. For now, let's have a look at getting a musical foundation for this track. And we're going to start with programming a basic chord structure. Lovely. So don't worry if you've got no music theory knowledge at all. There's some really great tools in Cubase all built in, which are super easy to use and also really powerful as you'll see. So strap in and let's do this. The first thing we need is an instrument to play. And for this, we'll use a sample that comes in the work files of this tutorial. So let's go to the right hand side. Make sure you're on media tab and you're still in the file browser section. And in the same folder as we got the last sample, the audio folder, we're going to be looking for a pluck sound, the pluck 05 in particular. And it's right at the top here. So it's this one here, pluck 05C. And this sound actually comes from our very own House Tools 1 sample pack, which has over 700 megabytes of highly usable samples, just like this one. The link to that is below if you want to check that out in a bit more detail. So right click, create sample track, just like we did before. And now we have a second track in the project window just for the pluck sound. Just to make sure that is highlighted. It should be highlighted already, but I'm just double checking. And at the bottom, we're actually going to click a different tab. We're going to click on chord pads. So chord pads is really, really great for just jamming and coming up with some ideas really easily and it allows people that have no music theory knowledge to make really really cool chord progressions really quickly and as you'll see as this tutorial unfolds once you have a basic chord progression you'll be able to make lots of other musical elements from this one chord progression so as you can see there's some chords already loaded into the pads and you can trigger these just by clicking on them And what this is doing is playing the chord version of our sample. So the sample here, it's now playing the chord. And as this is a bit loud, I'm just gonna click and drag. Remember what John said to you, we need to adjust our volumes of individual elements relatable to the kick drum. Still quite loud, we'll turn it down even more. And that's a bit better. So as you can hear, the sample sounds a bit low in pitch, so we can easily resolve that by coming to the sampler control tab and coming up to the octave, click and drag up once, so it goes to octave one. Now when we play the chord pads, it sounds a lot better. I'll just also show you back on the sampler control page that you can adjust via semitones here. So not a whole octave, and you can do it by sense as well with the fine tune if you want to. If you want to get that back to zero, and this is applicable for most things in Cubase, you can just hold down control or command and left click and it will reset it to zero. So Cubase comes with many, many chord presets that you can choose from. Just go to this kind of box button over here and click load chord pads preset. And you'll get this window pop up and you can just choose any of these presets. You've also got major scales and minor scales. And for this song, we're gonna be using the B minor scale. So I'm just gonna click on that once and you'll see that they've changed behind. Double click to get rid of their window. So these are the chords in the B minor scale. Of course, you don't have to use the B minor scale for your own tracks. It's just that this particular song that we're making is in B minor. So after you've played round, and found something interesting, you can start dragging in the chords into the project window. This is just for an example. Don't follow what I'm doing here. I'm just simply showing you, you can drag chords in. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo that. Go Control Z or Command Z to undo, or Control Z if you're in the USA. Okay, we've got some more options to show you in Chord pads, just click on this button here, show hide chord assistant. And you can see we have the circle of fifths helper come up. And basically my chosen one chord or origin chord, which is B minor is in the middle here. 
and all the chords around it, particularly the green ones, Cubase is saying these work really, really well. So you can easily, again, come up with a chord progression and you can also drag those in as well, which we'll be doing in just a sec. For higher versions of Cubase, like Artist and Pro, you also have proximity as well. But we're just gonna use the circle of fifths as that is in all versions of Cubase. So let's see if we can come up with something easily. Quite like those three chords there. So let's drag those in. B minor, A major, and E major. So I want this chord progression to be four bars long, so I'm just gonna extend the very last one, double the length of it, and we'll be going in in a second and changing some of these notes around. But let's glue these together now, rather than have three separate MIDI segments, let's glue them together. So I highlight them all, come up to my toolbar at the top, click glue, and then just click anywhere inside and it's now glued those three together so it's one part. And to go back to my ordinary tool, my object selection tool, just right click once and release. So we don't need this circle of fifths window anymore and let's just duplicate this chord progression over. So I'm just gonna double click this MIDI segment and go into it so we can edit the notes. And if you find that this lower zone is not big enough for you, which is quite possible, you can click this arrow here and it will open this up in a new window. So it gives you a lot more space. So I wanna make our notes shorter, so I'm just gonna highlight them all and click and drag the right hand side so each note or each chord is only one beat long. So also gonna make our chord progression a bit longer, in fact double in length, rather than come out of this segment and do it in the project window, I can do it right from here. So I've got everything highlighted, you can do that with the mouse or press Control A or Command A. That will highlight everything as well. Hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and click and drag over, or we're gonna copy over rather, over to bar nine. Make sure you stay on B2. And it's gonna ask me now if I want to enlarge the part. So I'm gonna click Enlarge Part. Now, if I was to come out of this window, you can now see that our MIDI segment is twice as long. Just extend that to the end, bar 13. So this is what yours should look like now. So we're gonna double click and edit these notes further. So just gonna show you what we've got so far. Obviously this is not the finished version. So let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's change the feel of this a little bit. And one great way to change the feel of a chord progression is to play with the voicing. Now voicing simply means that you're changing the order of the notes in the chord. So we can still use the same notes, but we might put them in different octaves. So for example, we could highlight these top upper notes of the first two chords and put them down an octave. Now the easy way to do that, you can obviously click and drag them down, but that can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. Just hold down the shift and the down keys together, and it shifts them down an octave. So just have a little listen. So it's just giving it a slightly different feel. I'm just gonna undo that and play it again. Control Z. And I'll just redo that. Control Shift and Z. So with various tricks like this, we can change the feel of our chord progression, and there's many, many more tricks than that, don't worry about that. But this is just to get you started. And we can start changing the emotion of the track once we start playing with the voicings. So I'm just gonna scroll over and make some changes in the second half of our progression. So I'm gonna highlight just the one this time, the first chord, and press shift down. And highlight the middle note of the last chord, and go up an octave, so that's shift and up. And then I'm just gonna add in a couple of extra notes just to make this a bit more funky. So I'm gonna add in a C sharp here, just one beat before bar nine. Hold down Alt to get the pen tool. And one more extra note over here at bar 12, beat four. And let's just have a little listen to how that's changed the feel of our track.
Okay, obviously that's super basic at the moment and we will be building on this, but it's just to get us started. And you'll notice there that I was zooming in and out as it was playing. And another way to zoom in and out, which we haven't mentioned yet, is to press G and H on your keyboard. So let's make this even funkier by changing the timing. Let's change the timing of the second chord. If you move it half a beat in advance, you can get some really good results. I'm just going to do the same on the second one. And to scroll left or right, I'm just holding down shift and using the mouse wheel. So second one in the second half, also half a beat in advance. Shift and scroll. And let's have a listen. So as you can hear, it's a lot more funky now. It's got a more energetic timing to it. So if you're new to music theory and this is a little bit over your head, don't worry. We have a full course on this. It's called Music Theory for EDM Producers. And it explains all these techniques and many, many more in a really, really easy to understand way with lots of step-by-step -step lessons. So check that out if you're interested and you'd like some more information about it. So now all that's left to do is just to tidy up a little bit. Just gonna come out of that window and we're gonna color this track. So another way to color is to put your cursor over the track itself on the left-hand side, the gray bit. Hold down Shift and use your mouse wheel. And that looks pretty funky to me. And I'm just gonna tidy up this long name here. So just double click it. Just going to call it Pluck01 because there is another Pluck coming later on. And that just refers to the type of sound that it is. Now before I press Enter, I'm going to press Shift Enter. So it renames this MIDI segment as well. If you don't press Shift and Enter, it only names this track on the left hand side. So as you can see, we're building up this track very, very slowly. But it will eventually be a full professional track by the end of this course. And if you're liking this tutorial so far, please, please click the like button. These videos take a long, long time to make. And if you want to be notified about more great Cubase tutorials, hit that juicy subscribe button. All the best, guys. See you later.